Welcome to Nation Beat. I am Janelle Novel bringing you this brief on the pulse of our nation and highlights around the heart of St. Lucia. St. Lucia is on target to exceed 1 million tourists this year as the tourism sector continues to soar. The Department of Infrastructure to sign the consultancy agreement for designs for the Millennium Highway and West Coast Roads project and setting the pace for a milestone celebration. On the heels of being crowned the world's leading honeymoon destination, as well as trending destination for millennials in 2019, St. Lucia is on target to exceed 1 million tourists this year. Last year, the island experienced a more than 10% overall increase in visitor arrivals. The figures were released at a press conference hosted by the Minister for Tourism, Culture, Creative Industries, Information and Broadcasting. In the year 2018, the island recorded the arrival of some 1.2 million tourists to its shores. A 10.2% overall increase was recorded. The cruise sector saw an increase of 13.6%, the yachting sector recorded an increase of 26.7%, and stayover arrivals increased by 2.2%. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Dominic Fede, indicated that the industry continues to surpass expectations. For guests staying in hotels, um, we missed the 400,000 uh, mark by just about 5,000 people. Uh, cruise stayover arrival numbers, sorry, uh, came in at 394,780 uh, visitors to our shores or it represents a 2.2% increase. Overall, the destination grew by some 10.2%. So these are very, very strong numbers. The UK market is very encouraging, came in with a very strong December. And this is despite all the uncertainty in the world about Brexit. We see that the UK in December recorded an 18% increase. But what this says is that despite all of the challenges, and despite all of the obstacles that St. Lucia's demand in the UK is still very, very strong. And this is something that we continue to build on. The minister expressed gratitude to all entities that devoted their time and effort to ensure that St. Lucia remained the premier destination. A project will also be coming on stream to ensure that the full impact of the industry can be measured. According to Minister Fede, there currently exists no clear-cut way to measure tourist expenditure, a figure that he said was estimated to be close to $1 billion. However, the ministry is soon to rectify the issue. One of the projects that we're working on to make sure that we properly record the economic impact of tourism is to make sure that we institute what is called a tourism satellite account so that we'll be able to trace the tourism dollars step by step. But while we are doing that, we're also working on an exciting project to enhance the revenue performance of the destination in all uh, visitor areas, in Point Surfing, among our taxi drivers, with our vendors. And the area which we, where we began is with our vendors. Over 200 of them have been trained in our OECS Tourism Competitive Project. And what we're basically training them in is our areas such as customer service, um, areas such as product development, you would see as you go through the market, um, there is some level of repetitiveness and copying on the part of some of the vendors. The government of St. Lucia is currently embarking on several projects with the aim of ensuring that St. Lucians are able to benefit from St. Lucia's growing tourism industry. Meantime, moves are afoot to increase the room stock on island. More in this report. St. Lucia continues to be among the leading destinations in the Caribbean as the government presses ahead to facilitate an enabling environment for growth within the sector. The extension of the Point Seraphine Booth 1 last year enabled mega vessels such as Caribbean Anthem of the Seas with a 5,000 passenger capacity to dock in the Castries Harbour. The Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Alan Chastney, during his New Year's address, stated that bigger ships with the capacity for 6,000 passengers are coming into the sector and adjustments must be made in order to receive them. It was this same sort of vision by the United Workers' Party administration 
which resulted in Point Seraphim complex being built in the 80s. This is now proving inadequate, and we have to in reinvest in Point Seraphim and expand our investment to also improve the products, services, and recreation opportunities in the Castries market area. The Prime Minister stated that the hotel plant in the north of the island is on the verge of expansion as accommodation is a vital and fundamental part of tourism supply. Honourable Alan Chastney explained that the Rex properties at Rodney Bay is in development and the Rex St. Lucian is to undergo reconstruction, Sandals at Shock is being upgraded and the construction of a Hyatt Hotel in St. Lucia is in progress. Hyatt is a major international brand and we're now fortunate to have it showing an interest in this country once again. Invest St. Lucia has completed transactions with a Barbados-based firm to buy land at Shock for an 800-room Hyatt Hotel, which will be a mixture of the European plan and all-inclusive. Construction is due to begin in the second half of 2019. The government also plans to improve the safety and capacity of the national road network. A recent audit determined at present approximately 52% of our road network is classified as good or fair, with the remaining 48% being classified as poor or very poor. Hence, when we've already begun the road improvement and maintenance program to address the quality of the road network in St. Lucia through strategic maintenance of primary roads and 55 kilometers of secondary roads. The government will make an investment of $500 million into road rehabilitation. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. As you heard in that Anicia Antoine report, government has earmarked some $500 million for road rehabilitation in the country, an investment that will enhance the visitor experience here. On Wednesday, January 23, the Department of Infrastructure will officially sign the consultancy agreement contract for the designs and will launch the Millennium Highway and West Coast Roads upgrading project. This signals immediate commencement of the project. The project will deliver complete rehabilitation of the Millennium Highway, reconstruction of the West Coast Roads from Kalisak all the way to Sufre, design for construction of the new Ancillary Bridge, and a robust island-wide road safety program. All this work will be done with grant funding from the Caribbean Development Bank, United Kingdom Caribbean Infrastructure Partnership Fund. This will result in an injection of approximately $115 million into the local economy. And as the tourism rate soars and development projects get on stream, key stakeholders are being engaged as well as positioned to benefit from the gains of the sector. The Office of the Mayor has officially launched a vendor's registration program. It was preceded by several consultations held in 2017 with merchants from the vendor's arcade, provisions and craft markets, and roadside traders. The Vendors Registration Program will provide significant benefits to vendors, such as free access to public comfort stations, job letters identifying them as authorized vendors, ID cards, and tent packages for roadside vendors, amongst other benefits. So far, 178 vendors have been registered under the program. This is Nation Beat, coming up, setting the pace for a milestone celebration, St. Lucia's 40th anniversary of independence. Black Sigatoka is a fungal disease which affects the leaves of banana and plantain plants. It causes a reduction in the size of the bunch and the quality of the fruit. In commercial banana and plantain production, Black Sigatoka disease is controlled with chemical as well as non-chemical measures. Chemical measures involve the application of spray oil and fungicides. However, it is neither practical nor safe to use agrochemicals to control black cigatoka in backyard gardens. Non-chemical measures include good agronomic and cultural practices such as weed control and proper drainage. Affected parts of leaves should be pruned or cut off from the plant. Use a clean, sharp cutlass or knife. Infected leaves should be disposed of properly or added to a compost heap. For more information on how to treat and control Black Sigatoka on your farm or in your backyard garden, contact the Black Sigatoka Management Unit at 451-5491, 451-5894 or email bpmu at candw.lc. 
This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture in collaboration with the International Cooperation and Development Fund of the Republic of China on Taiwan. Welcome back. It's our time. That's the rallying call from the nation's leader as plans get underway for the celebration of St. Lucia's 40th anniversary of independence. During this year's New Year's address to the nation, Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney noted that the occasion is a time for reflection, but also a time for all St. Lucians to celebrate in grand style our achievements as a nation. Prime Minister Chastney urged nationals to abandon defensive behaviors and unite. Doing so, he underscored would better position the island. Let us rededicate ourselves to the task of pushing our country forward. Let us remember St. Lucia is a nation built on values that are worth protecting. We cannot be our own enemies when the real enemies are poverty, deprivation, underdevelopment, and critically lost opportunities. The policies of the government are to provide affordable, quality health care, globally competitive education, public safety, and security for all. Our policies are designed to create opportunities for our people through employment and participation in economic activity. I urge you to join us in making these things happen. Meantime, a year-long calendar of events has been planned for the milestone celebration. We get details from Anisia Antoine. Activities for Independence 40 were launched here on December 12, 2018. Since then, the planning committee has been busy fine-tuning the program for the year-long observance which will culminate on December 12, 2019. Last week, committee members including Sonia Sifley apprised the media of some of the events planned. We have the St. Lucia story and we call it Pitizil Guawev. It means we're a small island with a big dream. And this is going to be a production put on by Mr. Adrian Auger. We also will have the best of St. Lucia. And when we talk about the best of St. Lucia, we really want to promote excellence. We, we are talking about no mediocrity. So therefore, we want that night to get our best singers in all genres, folk, calypso, soca, um, jazz, everything on that night. So we will be really having a treat. The theme for this year's independence celebration is all in our journey, our future. And Minister with Responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, Senator Fortuna Bell Rose, encouraged St. Lucians to heed this call. Our country is moving into deliverance mode and we all must be in as the theme of this independence celebration See, We must all be in, but we must be in with the right attitude. We must be in with the right mindset. We must understand the value of respect and our fellow men, of our fellow men. We must believe in love and the golden rule of doing unto others as we would have them do unto us. The minister also stressed the significance of the number 40. So today, we are here on the eve of our nation's 40th birthday. You know, at 40, one is expected to be very mature and know exactly what, they were, what they're about and where they're headed. And our Helen, fair Helen of the West, is very clear on that direction. Last week's event also saw presentations by the youth group representative, the Miss Independence pageant, as well as organizers of the religious program for Independence 40. The press event also featured the premiere of a special independent song written by Ronald Boo Hinkson, as well as a performance by Rashad, who is featured in the Independence 40 music video. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. That's Nation Beat. Join us next time on NTN at 7.30 p.m. with a repeat at 7.30 a.m. and on this station as we feel the pulse and heart of our community. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Gerald Norville.